Welcome back students. Our topic for the next section is the periodic table. You can probably get this shower curtain at amazon.com of course. Now in your uh, general course resources module of our canvas page you should be able to download this periodic table. That is the one we're going to be using. Uh, you will see as we go along why I like the format of it. We updated it in uh, 2017 when the science community finally accepted the names of many of these elements in there that were formerly not named. But for the purpose of this presentation, I might be using a different one. So here is the one that I'm going to use just because it's in different colors. And I'm sorry that it's a little blurry. It's an old picture. And uh, I should, probably should have gone back and gotten a uh, better focus one. But uh, I just want you to look at the color sections here. Now, just like anything else, the periodic table is a tool, it's an instrument. And so it's important that we sort of like know how to handle it, okay? It has uh, several sections in it. It's obviously a table which has columns and rows. But first of all, let's look at the sections here. Elements can be divided into three categories and they are in color here. Uh, if you look at that zigzag line that runs down the middle of it, it'll separate them to the ones on the left, or let's call it the southwest of that line. Let me show you uh, based on your handout. You see that red zigzag line there that extends from underneath hydrogen all the way across the gap, all the way to uh, boron, and then kind of like goes like a little step uh, staircase down. That is going to divide the table into two major sections, and I'm going to call them southwest and northeast. All right. So the elements that are southwest of that zigzag line, and they are in kind of like a yellow to beige color in here, we're going to call those the metals. The elements that are essentially sitting along that zigzag line, that diagonal, are called the semi-metals, or sometimes called the metalloids. And then the elements that are in blue here, kind of like a, a like a light blue color here, uh, we're going to call these the non-metals. I'm kind of hesitating because I'm not sure that the colors are translating well into what you're seeing and what I have on my screen, but please uh, forgive me for that. So those are the three major categories. Now, these categories and elements, you know, in general have different properties. The metals are hard solids and they conduct heat and electricity. Non-metals can be solids, they can be liquids, they can be gases, but those that are solid are typically somewhat brittle. Of course, you can have the exception of carbon where its diamond form is extremely hard. And then the semi-metals, also called metalloids, have the property that they physically behave like metals. They're usually good semiconductors of electricity, but they have chemical properties those, like those of non-metals in that when they form compounds, many times they form molecules. Okay, let's go back to the periodic table. And of course, uh, tables have columns and they have rows. We're gonna call the columns groups or families. And typically we have numbers above the columns if you are using a periodic table from a European background, the columns or groups are numbered sequentially 1 through 18. But in the American one, we use a numbering system. I don't know about that, but anyway, uh, they, have, they have letters. So you can see where there's 1A, 2A. Then there is a gap over which all those groups have a B in them, and then it picks up again in the column that has boron, boron in it, 3A, 4A, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to refer to that numbering system in the future, all right? We're going to learn that that group number gives us a lot of information about the disposition of the electrons in those atoms. Some of the groups have particular names. For example, elements in group 1A are called the alkali metals. 
Now, hydrogen, although it's in group 1A, it is not a metal. That zigzag line that I mentioned earlier actually runs underneath hydrogen. So hydrogen is actually a non-metal. The elements in group 2A are called the alkaline earth metals. The elements in group 7A are called the halogens. And the elements in group 8A are called the noble gases. The elements in the middle section are called the transition metals. Some of these, as you can see in uh, rows six and seven, they're kind of offset. They're put in a separate section all by themselves. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, the rows in the periodic table are called periods. So it's not row one, row two, row three. It's actually period one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. Notice that periods six and seven are interrupted between atomic numbers 57 and 72 and between 89 and 104. These two sections are separate. They have different properties and the bottom are called the lanthanides and the actinides. So this row here, this, this group of elements in period six is called the lanthanides and the elements in period seven that are offset here are called the actinides. There is another way of classifying the elements, and this is going to come later on uh, into play when we study a little more about the architecture of atoms, particularly the way electrons are organized. So once more, the elements in the middle of the periodic table, the ones that have group numbers that have a letter B attached, are called the transition elements or transition metals. And then the ones that have group numbers that have a letter A connected to them, they are called the main group elements. All right. Okay, so this is a very, this has been a very quick survey of the periodic table, and I hope you enjoy it. And let's go ahead and look at some fun stuff here with our good friend, Harry Potter. Like, Tom Lehrer, in, in my opinion, is the cleverest and funniest man of the 20th century, and I just, he's kind of my hero. And he wrote a song called The Elements, because he was a scientist, and it's basically, it's the name of every element in the periodic table. <laughs> um, and that's, that's my party piece. It's quite long, so do stop me if you just get bored. Okay. But I will, this kept me up last night, I was so nervous about doing this. Um, well, do I feel bad now? No! <laughs> okay, okay, so. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and uranium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, and americium, ruthenium, uranium, uranium, zirconium, ruthenium, vanadium, and anthium, and arsenium, and acetine, and radium, and golden protactinium, and dinium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's yttrium, terbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gallium, and iodium, and iridium, and sodium, and silicon, silicon, and barium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, and iridium, and barium. And let's start the next verse. There's volume in here. There's holmium and helium and athium and erbium, phosphorus and francine and fluorine and terbium, and manganese and mercury and of magnesium, dysprosium and scandium and cerium and cesium. There's lead, praseodymium, platinum, plutonium, palladium, promethium, <laughs> potassium, polonium, and tantalum, technetium, titanium, tellurium, and cadmium, and calcium, chromium, and curium. There's sulfur, californium, and fermium, bacillium, and also mendelevium, arsinium, nobelium, and argon, radon, neon, zinc, ah, and argon, hold on, quiet! quiet. <laughs> There's sulfur, californium, and fermium, bacillium, and also mendelevium, einsteinium, nobelium, and argon, radon, neon, krypton, xenon, zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin, and sodium. Now, <laughs>